looking at St. Peter's Basilica to realize that the church is built on a small hill, which in ancient times was called the Mons Vaticanus, which means in Latin, the Hill of Prophesying. And it got that name because it was in ancient days dedicated to the multi-breasted goddess Kibbele and her consort Attis. And there were priests attached to these two deities called the Archigali, the head roosters, who, when sacrifices were made to the deities, used to examine the entrails, and from the examination of the entrails, come up with predictions of the future. But the area around the small hill of Mons Vaticanus was famous for another thing, and that was its mosquitoes. It was a great pestilential swamp surrounding the Mons Vaticanus, and if it was famous for its mosquitoes, it was infamous for the wine it produced. Ancient Romans were not of one accord as to what Vatican wine tasted like. Some said it tasted like vinegar, and others said it tasted much like poison. <laughs> and so to remedy this, it was Agrippina the Elder, the mother of the Emperor Caligula, who decided to drain the marshes around the Mons Vaticanus and recultivate the land. Well, she got rid of the mosquitoes, but Vatican wine still continued to be basically a synonym for bad wine. It was her son, Gaius Caligula, who decided to use the land cultivated by his mother for another purpose, and that was to build a circus. A circus, of course, and this is a reconstruction of one in the Museum of Roman Civilization in Rome, a circus is essentially just a large racetrack for chariots. And Caligula started building one on the region near Mons Vaticanus. He brought a great obelisk from Alexandria in the year 37, which he put on the spine of the circus. Well, this circus, we don't know if it was finished during the reign of Caligula or not, but it was inherited by Nero, and Nero decided to use it as a private amusement park. We first hear of the circus during Nero's reign when in the year 64, the great fire of Rome occurred. Now, the ancient Roman historian Tacitus says that Nero probably was not responsible for setting the fire, but he certainly wasn't very prompt in having the fire put out. And so as public sentiment rose against Nero, he needed a scapegoat, and a very convenient scapegoat was a new religious group called the Christians. And Tacitus says in the imperial annals of Rome that Nero rounded up Christians, and for the entertainment of the people, which he brought into the circus, he set them on fire during the night and had wild beasts attack them. It is according to Christian lore that in the aftermath of the Great Fire, St. Peter was crucified head down on the spine of the circus of Caligula and Nero. Now, whether this crucifixion took place in the year 64, in the immediate aftermath of the fire, or 67, while the witch hunt for Christians was still going on, is uncertain. A Christian source writing around the year 200 AD, a man historians refer to as the Pseudo Linus, said Peter was crucified near the place that is called the circus next to the obelisk of Nero on the hill. And then after Peter died, Christians took his body down and buried it in a nearby cemetery. Now this is the insert you have just pulled out. We're gradually going to build it up during the course of today's lecture. There was a great circus which you see reconstructed and just to the north of that circus was a very small private cemetery. The Christians took Peter's body and buried it, not in one of the mausoleums of the cemetery, but in an alley behind the cemetery. Well, what do we know of this cemetery? Well, here we have a bird's eye view of it as it was excavated by Vatican archeologists during World War II. The cemetery was built on sloping ground going up the Mons Vaticanus. It was started around the early part of the first century AD, continued in use throughout the second and possibly the third century AD. From excavations, we know that the burials consisted first of all of cremations. Now, since photography is not allowed in the Vatican cemetery, which is under St. Peter's, we're doing it by example here. A cremation burial for the Romans was essentially when you burned the body down, collected the ashes, and put them in the small niches, which you see in this Roman tomb from Ostia. There were also the regular inhumation burials, where someone was put in a coffin or a sarcophagus. 
The excavations reveal <clears throat> that the tombs probably look something very much like this, tombs on the Isola Sacra in the Tiber River, not far from the city of Rome, before they were destroyed by Constantine, who built the great basilica over them. So you have to imagine just a string of these small mausoleums looking like small houses with burials inside, and behind them now, the Christians take Peter's body and bury it in an alley behind these great mausoleums. <laughs>